This is Motoko Bootcamp 2023 and welcome to Storing Data, Array, List and Buffer. So why did I want to have this lecture? So I remember that when I started, I, look, I took a look at the Motoko list of libraries and this is what you can see on the screenshot. And I saw a lot of them um, and most of them are data structures. So you have Array, HashMap, List, Buffer, Tree, TreeMap and probably um, more. And I remember that it was so many options, I didn't know which one to choose. And I just wanted something to store data inside my canister and I was not able to do it. So I'm going to explain you three data structures today, array, list and buffer, with the goal of how, like, like my approach is going to be, how can you use those data structures? I'm also going to mention how those data structures are actually implemented in memory. That's important because those data structures are different and they have trade-off. For example, array is gonna be very efficient for accessing elements, not adding elements. But if you are just starting out, this is very much of um, optimization. And don't worry too much about optimization, just get something working and then you can take a look at your code and maybe at this point, uh, try to optimize, maybe change the data structure to something more efficient. But yeah, if you just want something running, uh, this is, going to be a good lecture for you. So let's start with array. I have three Motoko files. I have one for array, one for buffer, and one for list. And also I have defined those three canisters inside my dev6.json. All right. So the first thing to understand about array is that an array is um, constituted of elements of the same type. So for example, we can define an array like this, um, words, which would be an array with text inside. And we can put Motoko is the best language. So this will totally work because all elements are defined as text and this is a text and everything is a text. But something like this wouldn't work. So if you say ages and then you say, okay, I'm going to put not inside. Then you put uh, 35, 20. 15, and then you want to do 100. This is not gonna work because this is of type text. So literal of type text does not have expected type not. So yeah, keep in mind that you can only add array of same, same elements. Uh, you have other languages where you can do mix up, like you can have not with text, but this is not possible in Motoko. The first function I want to implement is a function that uh, is going to print all elements elements of the provided array. So to do that, I'm going to need the um, print function from the debug library. So this is from the base library slash debug. Let's define the function, public function print all elements we want an array and an array of type text. And we are not, we don't want to return anything because we are just, uh, we just want to print on the, on the terminal. So this is of type async and this is the unit type when you return nothing. Now we take the array and we are using a for loop for everything inside the array. So array dot vols. We are using the debug.print and e. So I uh, let me explain a bit. The um, array, you can iterate on all the elements inside the array using array.volts. This is uh, the syntax you can use for a for loop. And we are using debug.print. Debug.print is a special function that you can find in the, in the Motoko debug library that enables you to print whatever is provided as arguments, it needs to be of type text and it will be printed inside the terminal. Let me show you how we can use this function. So let's do a start of the replica, defix start clean. We have the replica running here. And now we can do defix deploy and it's gonna deploy uh, our three canisters. We only need this one. So yeah, the other, the other ones are empty, but it's not a problem. Since we are locally, we are not paying for cycles. So, 
Okay, so we have the candid UI for array. So let's use it. We can provide an array um, of length, let's say length three. So this is the three. And now we need to provide the elements. So hello, Motoko Bootcamp. Let's call it. And as you can see, we can see nothing. This is because the return type of our function is the unit type. So um, we see nothing. And so you need to look inside the replica. So the terminal with your replica, this one in our case, to actually see the output of debug.print. So as you can see, we have all the elements inside the array. Hello, Motoko Bootcamp. Make sure that you are running that on a local replica. If you're trying to do that on the mainnet, so on the internet computer, you don't have access to this terminal. You don't have access to the replica. And there is no way to use debug.print on the mainnet. Now, second function. I want to create a function that takes uh, two arrays and create one array, which is the concatenation of the two. So let's call it add arrays. We have array one, which is of type uh, text. We are doing everything with array of type text, but of course you could do kind of similar function with not or int or float or whatever. And we are returning the array this time. So, okay. To add arrays, we will need to use uh, a function from the array library. So array base array. And now let's take a look quickly at this uh, module to see what, what are the functions that we have inside. Okay, we are inside the documentation for the array module. As you can see, this is the first one in the list. And on the right, we have a list of functions. So we have init, tabulate, tabulate var, freeze, and so on. And those are all the functions that you can find on the array uh, module. So the one that's interesting for us in our case is called append. And function happen takes array one, takes array two, and returns uh, create a new array by appending the values of array one and array two. There is a message though. It says depreciated array dot happen copy its argument and has linear complexity when used in a loop. Consider using a buffer and buffer dot happen instead. So that's more of an advanced subject. But whenever you use array dot happen, so whenever you happen to arrays, it's gonna create a new array. Um, you have to take all the elements in the array one and take all the elements in the array two and copy it inside a new array. You cannot just modify the data structure. This is because of the way arrays are implemented and how the memory behind the arrays are managed. Um, so this is very much of a um, depreciated and non-recommended way to do it. But it is still interesting uh, to see how it works. So we can go back to our code. And so we have imported array. Now we want to return the concatenation and we are going to use array dot append and then array one and array two. And if you look, we have a message. So it says that array dot append is depreciated. And again, uh, I don't recommend to use that in a production project, but for learning purposes, I think it's still useful. Try to deploy the Canister. So this time we're just going to deploy array. And this time I'm going to call the canister directly from the terminal. I'm not, I don't want to use the candid UI just to show you like a different way to do it. So we can do def defix canister call, then the name of the canister. So there would be array in this case, and the name of the function. So add arrays. And now we need to provide arguments. Um, the arguments need to, need to be provided inside quotes and parentheses. And then, so array one, we are um, using this syntax. So it's a vec, and another vec. This is, um, this is very confusing because here you don't have array as you write them here. This is because when you use the terminal, you are using the candid UI. Uh, the con Sorry, the candid syntax from here. So let's do hello world. And here, let's do 
how are you okay so we have a problem apparently unrecognized comma found okay so in the vec okay in the array we are using um, a comma but here we have to use a, another type of comma so this like this and yeah once again uh, don't get confused by the syntax here I'm just using this to show you but I don't recommend to use that on a daily basis the candid UI is probably best for what you want to do here we are using candid directly and not motoko okay so it seems to work the last function I want to show you today is a function that will add one to all elements inside the array. We will code this function uh, public function add one and it takes an array and this time it has to be an array of type not and it will return an array of type not. So for example if we have an array with like one two three it's going to return two three four and we could actually um, use the for loop as we did here create a new array and just add one to all elements but um, I forgot I think I forgot the func here yeah so instead of using the for loop I'm going to show you another method which you can find in the array library so let's take a look there is a function called map which is very useful when working with array and if you look at the documentation it might seem a bit confusing because they are using a generic type which we'll see later in the in the bootcamp but basically this function is going to take an array and a function and it's going to apply this function to all the elements inside the array so let's say your function here is a function that just add one to one to whatever element it takes a nut and returns another nut which is x plus one then it's this function map is going to take your array and apply this function to all elements inside the array so that's how we could get adding one to all elements the function you provide could be anything could be for example square uh, so that would be you could square all the elements inside the array for example if you add uh, one two three then it's going to be one time one so one two times two so four three times three so uh, nine and so on it could also be minus one or another multiplication or anything it can be anything so let's see how we could implement that we need to use array so we need to return array dot map the first argument we provide is the array so in our case it's array and then we need to create a function and that's how you would do it um, maybe we can do it separately so create a private function this time if you forget the private it's also fine because it's private by default add one this is just a convention um, I really like to separate my function public and private with an underscore so this is a private one so I don't confirm um, I don't uh, make a mistake between the public and the private this function take a nut and return another nut and it returns n uh, plus one and this is the function we are going to use in the array.map so like this okay so once again deploying and testing that I'm, I want to test it from the terminal again so add one uh, we need to put the arguments inside of this so we create a vec and we populate it so one three five so we should have uh, two four and six and that's it that's what we get so it seems to work that's about it for array um, there are a lot of powerful thing you can do with array but I would say array is a bit complex in the beginning to work with especially since the doc documentation that you see here you have those x and y and those types and it's very hard to read um, this is because they are using generic types 
and that's something we will see on the on the next day. Now we can move on to the um, buffer type. So to use buffer, we actually actually need to import it. I can show you if you try to do, let's say, student names is equal to buffer uh, of with text inside and initial value. It doesn't work because it's going to say unbound variable buffer. This is because the type buffer by default, it's not like array. It doesn't exist in Motoko. Uh, you need to import it. So import first the buffer type, uh, the buffer library. So base buffer. And then you can do let student names is equal to buffer dot buffer, then the text. So this is the type of the elements inside the buffer. And then an initial value, we can put 10. So let me explain uh, what's going on here. I remember that buffer dot buffer was very confusing uh, when I saw it for the first time. This is because, as I said, the type buffer doesn't exist. So you need to import the type buffer from the buffer library. And actually buffer is a class, but we will see later the, the main difference. Then you need to provide the type of the element inside. Uh, so this is this will be name, so we can we can choose text. And then you need to provide an initial value, which will be the size of the buffer. You can provide zero or one because the buffer is going to grow automatically as needed. Uh, so but you can put 10 if you if you don't want to, to bother too much. Uh, make sure that you don't put like 1000 because this is if it's not used, it's just going to waste space for nothing. Let's take a look at the buffer library. So again, uh, Motoko by base library, this is the documentation. We can see that buffer is a class. And this is how you instan instantiate one. So import again, and then buffer, the buffer, the type inside, and the initial value. So this corresponds to what we have here. OK, first function, I want to add a new student. So I will call this function public function join school. And then I'll put a name of type text and I'm, I will return a message. And I want this function to add the student inside the, the list of student name of uh, the list, in this case, the buffer. So Again, let's take a look at the buffer library. We have the definition and the size, and then the next function is add. So it looks like we can add element to the buffer. And the syntax for it is just buffer.add. So let's try it out. In this case, it would be student names.add, the name. And it looks like this is of type unit type, and we need to return welcome to school and then the name. Okay, let's uh, deploy the, um, it's called buffer. Let's try the function, the fx canister call buffer join school. And then let's say, oh. okay, so it seems that it worked, but actually we don't have access to this array, so we cannot ver really verify it. That's why the second function is to show the contents of the buffer. So public, this time it will be a query function, uh, show students, and it will return an array of type text. So it seems that we have to convert our buffer to array. So let's see if we see something like this, and there is a to array function. Looks like it's depreciated, so maybe we can try to see another one. To array. Okay, this one is not depreciated. Creates an array containing elements from the buffer. And it looks like it's buffer dot to array, then the type, and then the buffer. In our case, that would be buffer dot to array, uh, then the student names, and then and then that's it. So we can do this to be a bit clear about what we returned. And it looks like we didn't need to put the type, but we could do something like this. Um, this is not necessary though. So let's try without it. Okay. Let's see 
it's called our buffer and see uh, this what's the name of the function show students we don't need to provide arguments for this one and it looks like the array is empty this is because we added the, um, the student name but then we upgraded the canister so we actually lose uh, we actually lost all the state so let's do it again and now we should see we should see the array populated okay so it seems that our two functions are working now the last function i want to implement with buffer is a function that remove removes a student by name and what i mean by this is remove public function remove student this function take takes a name returns nothing and what i want to do here is this function will iterate so check all the values inside student names and if the um, names correspond to the one that we have provided here it will remove this student from the, the buffer so to do that we can iterate through the buffer we can use the for loop uh, with the um, name so name inside in uh, the buffer so student oops student names dot vols again this is how you iterate inside the buffer this is the same syntax that we use for the array okay i can show you here um here yeah but this time instead of just printing we are going to check if the name inside is equal to the name provided and in this case we want to yeah we want to remove the only problem is that um, remove which is a function that exists on the buffer library so here takes the index so we actually need to know the index um, in the buffer and to do that we will need a counter so counter of type not initially uh, initially is, it will be zero and every time we go into the for loop we will do counter is equal to counter plus one and then we will remove whatever is in the counter um okay so yeah this will this will return the um, the, the element that we remove actually so we need to use a trick so let's uh, remove name uh, remove name is of is equal to student names that remove okay and we should be good now so we can trade out we can deploy the buffer again let's say uh, so we should be empty yes we can do a join school and then let's say okay so now we can show students we should have two and if we do remove students it should remove a student we can verify and it seems to work great okay we are finally at the latest type so the type list i'd say that the type list is a bit more complex than the two others we've seen it's not that lists are very hard to understand but um, it requires to understand optional type tuples and generics and we haven't seen all those concepts so far so this is a bit advanced don't worry too much if you don't uh, understand all of it right now this is how lists are uh, implemented in motoko so those are linked lists a linked list basically means that it's a list where you have one element so the start of the list then this element will point to the next uh, list this list will be composed of an element and the pointer to the next list then the element and then the, the next element and so on until you have null which means it's the it's the end of the list so in motoko we have a module list so we can import it list and let's see the documentation for it so here um, this is how you define the type list so again don't worry if you don't understand all of it right now you have basically a type list which is which can be the you can replace the t 
with not, for example. Uh, let, let's actually do it. Um, this would be, let's say, a, a list of natural number would be like this. And then you would have a natural number and another list. This syntax basically is the equivalent of the, of the, the images we've just seen. It means that the list is either null, uh, if it's null, then we know it's the end, or it's, uh, it's two elements, so the elements, and then the next list. So now we can check the, um, the function to create a list. So we can use dot nil, for example. It will create an empty list. So let's say let age students which will be a list of natural number is equal list.nil. Now we want to create a function that will add uh, students. And the way to do it would be to define this as a variable um, and doing age students is equal to, let's see how we can add options. So we have this function push. This function push will take a value and we'll add it to the list. So we need to provide the value and the list and it returns the new list. So let's say list.push, then the value would be the age and the list's original one would be age students. Okay, and we need to return something. So let's say like this. And then again, query function show students. Um, maybe we want to return directly the list. So this time it's not the names, but it's the ages of students. And return age students. Let's deploy our list. So this time it's list. And call list add students. And the age, let's say 20. Um, it seems that our function hasn't been implemented. So let's see what's wrong. Mm, there is an error in the dfx.json. Ah, okay, yeah, so we haven't put the good file here. Okay. So you need to deploy again. Now let's run that and see. Uh, so it's show students. Okay. As you can see, this is the um, This is the representation of the list in Candid. So we have the elements, uh, the first element 20, and then we have the, the rest of the of the linked list. So it's it's new because we only have one volume, but maybe we can add another one and show it again. 30, and then as you can see, it's a, it's a list, and then inside you have another list, and then you have new. So it corresponds to the, the type we've defined here. Once again, list is pretty advanced. Um, don't worry too much if you don't understand all of it. You can use uh, buffer. I think buffer is the most simple type to start with. Okay, so let's implement a latest function. We will remove from the list uh, public query func, public func, remove student, and it will remove all the students with the age that we provide. So like this, and it will return nothing. It will just do the modifications. In order to do that, we will need to iterate through all the array. So let's see how we could do that, uh, all the lists, sorry. Let's see how we could do that. So we can push, we can check the last element, we can pop, we can check the size, we can access an element, then reverse, iterate. This seems interesting. but not adapted to what we want to do. 
Okay, filter seems very interesting. So we can use maybe list.filter. So list.filter, let's see how we need to write it. Uh, we need to provide the list. So in our case, it would be age students. And we need to provide a function that takes t. Again, this is generic type, so it means whatever is inside the array. So in our case, it's a nat. So it's a function that takes a nat and return a boolean. Uh, we can create this function. Actually, we need to create here because this function depends on the age that we provide. So we cannot create it outside of it. Um, actually, we don't really need to create a function. We can just do uh, like this. This is a syntax, quick shortcut. So this function takes x, which is the element inside your, the list, and returns uh, age is equal to x. And we need to say it, it's a type not. And now it seems that we need also this generic here. So we need to put this here. Uh, of course, this cannot be, it will return a new list. So we need to provide the value for it. So age the variable for it. So age students to this. And then we can return, oh, we can just say it like this. So. This will remove all the, the, the students with the age that we provide here. Once again, uh, list.filter, we can check list.filter. We need to provide the, the type, so we replace the t by not. Then we need to provide a list of type not. So this is age students. And we need to provide, um, this is called a predicate, usually. This is a function that takes elements inside the list and will test all of them and return a Boolean. And it will only keep the it will it will only keep the elements for which the predicates are true. So in our case, it will only keep the elements that are of the same age. So this is actually a mistake. It should be like this. We don't want to keep them so like this. Okay, let's deploy. Now, of course, our list should be uh, empty. So let's. Add students, we will add 30, 30 twice, and then 10, and then 20. So, okay, we have 30, we have 30, 30, 10, 20. And let's remove all the students with the age 30, so like this. Okay, so we've only uh, kept the 20 and the 10. So that's it for the lists and that's it for this lecture. Now we can move to the Q&A se section.